Hello, I'm going to be doing a product review today. It's going to be another set of the LED motion sensor light bars that you can get online. Uh, I've been asked by a company, Lighting Ever, to do a review of their product. I've got the product in over there. They saw my original video from the Amiga lights. Uh, they liked the video and they thought that I would like their product even more. They've given us some reasons why, so we'll find out if that's true. So if you are regular to my channel, you will know that I'm into electronics and taking things apart. Uh, so after the review and what they're like, we will of course take them apart and find out how they tick. I imagine it's a very similar one to the Amiga lights uh, with an LED strip, a motion sensor, some power management, but these lights have got a few extra little tricks up the sleeve. So it'll be interesting to see how they work. So here is the box. It is by company Lighting Ever. Now full disclosure, they contacted me and they have sent this unit to me to test in exchange for a video of how well the lights work. They were very confident that I would like them and that they are better than the previous Amiga lights. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how well they work. Very good box. Instructions in English and German. So let's just get them open. It's everything in the box. So what do you get? You get a feedback card, happy, not happy. You get the actual lights themselves, which are in these lovely protective tubes. Just shift them out of the way. So you get three in total, one, two, three. And along with them, you get three accessory packs. And in the accessory pack, you will get a USB to power adapter. I'll show you what this is for in a bit. You get a screw mount and you also get some screws to go with the screw mount and also a 3M sticky mount. So the 3M will go onto the wall and this will stick onto the wall. So this is the light. It's very similar. You've got a motion sensor in the middle and you've got two strips of LEDs. And now if I grab my other one, here is a previous one that I reviewed, the Amiga light, and you can immediately see the difference. This Amiga light actually has 10 LEDs uh, and this light LE one has 22. And you've got 10 either side. Now these are warm white, um, which gives off a nice warm glow. Now on one side you can see the power adapter to insert power lead. And this is what the USB cable is for because this is rechargeable. Compared to the new one, this actually contained four AAA batteries, which is a bit of a pain. I was going to buy rechargeable triple A's but it's a bit of a pain when they run out to recharge so having a rechargeable unit is very handy you just plug it in and it will charge from a standard 5 volt power supply give that a quick go power supply plug that in there you go you can see that you've got a red and Red light, I think that's charged. Blue when it's charging. These are already fully charged. The 1000 milliamp battery can be charged in one and a half hours. And this gives a two hour continuous mode. However, reading further up on the sensor mode, it can last for several months, I believe. So it seems like it's got quite a big capacity battery, which is very handy. Now to get this to work, it's also got a capacitive touch which is very handy on the side here. One touch to turn it on continuous. One touch to turn it on to sensor mode, which at the moment is on as well because I'm moving. 
and one touch to turn it off. If I just switch this on and show you the light away from the camera, you can see it's very bright, gives off a lot of light. If I just tap it off, you can see the difference. Quite considerable. And the motion sensor is very sensitive, a little too sensitive, as is the capacitive touch. It's very sensitive to touch. Essentially, you'll set it to either continuous on or sensor, and you'll usually set it straight to sensor, and you will just forget about it when you mount it. And to mount it, you've got a clip on, which has these screws, which will go into an actual wall, and this will attach snap in like that and then onto the wall you would have it mounted and it allows you to do a bit of directional angle of the light which is very cool and if you don't want something as permanent you can use this 3m sticker you can use this 3m sticker version which will just stick to the wall and this actually sticks with magnets which is even cooler and again, you can direct the light to where you want, so you can have it installed on the roof and direct it, or on a wall and also direct it. I think that's very cool. Incredibly bright. Let's see if we can get these ones working. You can see the difference in these two, They're both very bright, it's very difficult to come out in camera, uh, but the LE uh, new light bar is a lot brighter, um, just with the amount of LEDs. This one actually looks very spaced out in comparison. It doesn't really come across on camera. They look pretty much identical on camera. There we go, I reduced my camera a little so you can actually see the light and hopefully you can tell there's a slight difference. This is a new one and it is slightly brighter. Very different color cast as well. This is very cold. These are very cold LEDs and these are warm. Wow, they really blow up the camera. That is very bright. Let's switch this one off. Switch that one off. Very sensitive. I do like this magnetic mount. It's very cool. I'm going to be installing that in the cupboard. Let me just go over some additional specs in case you want to know. They are non dimmer bowl. They have a 120 degree sensor. They have less than 500 milliseconds starting time. They have an on off of 25,000, whatever that means. The input is 5 volts, as you would expect from the USB socket. And it is 2 watts power overall. The brightness is 106 lumens. And the cold temperature is 3000, which you can tell it is quite warm. Uh, the CRI is over 80, which is interesting. Gives it a good color range. Um, beam angle we've done shows you continuous and sensor mode. The sensors are PIR motion and a light sensor, which is what you would expect. There's your battery of a thousand milliamps, 1.5 hour charge, two hour continuous mode. And it is made of aluminium and PC, which I assume is polycarbonate. And the water resistance is IP20, which means it is not water resistant. Let's just shift these out the way. Let's get the other three. You get three in a pack. So they're very sensitive. But also very cool and very bright. Incredibly bright. The fact that they're rechargeable is very handy. You just plug them in recharge them when they're out. I've just dimmed the light so we can test the sensor mode out and just give you a bit more of a view for it. So if you press the left hand capacitance touch side, 
one will switch it on onto active mode and it will be in continuous on. It should stay on until the battery is drained. Press it again and you'll see a blue and red light. This puts it into sensor mode. Press it again, you'll see just a blue light and that completely turns it off. Okay, I have made it incredibly dark to test the sensor mode out. I've learnt my lesson from the last time I test these kind of lights uh, just to give you a bit more chance of actually seeing the lights. So if I just put it into sensor mode again, you have to press it twice, one for continuous, one for sensor mode, it will come on. And then after 15 to 20 seconds of no movement, the lights and the LED should switch off. 12 seconds later. Ooh. It just detected my head moving to check it. Let's try that again. A few moments later. And if I move my hand, it comes straight back on, just like that. So this is the cupboard to the boiler for my house. It doesn't have any lights in it. It's just where the boiler and the towels and the, the odd tub of paint lives. This is a perfect location for one of these lights. Going to easily install the magnetic base with the 3M tape would also be quite easy just to install the screw base onto a bit of wood. The light bar just snaps straight onto the magnetic base which is really cool and I can angle it so it's going to illuminate the whole cupboard and also the sensor is going to be in direct contact when someone opens the door. And hey presto, someone opens the door and the light comes on and they can see everything. Okay, so there you go. That's what I'm going to be using one of these for. You can use them for other things like inside cupboards, under stairs, um, a very bright uh, motion sensor nightlight. Um, but now we've done that, let's take one apart. You will be my victim. Now on this, this is going to be a pain. Incredibly sensitive. Now I'll try not to do this without touching the capacitive edge. So on the back, there's a couple of hex uh, slugs and they're very tiny. They take 1.5, which is incredibly small. So hopefully it's got to undo these and it should come apart. Feel free to talk amongst yourselves. That's one, see if this sets off. The capacitive touch, no. Ooh. Let's get my knife. He's got a knife. <laughs> okay, got the reinforcements. Nice. Start to come away. That's a knife. Here we go. Oh, it's a very neat power connector. Can't see too much down there. Not going to give. Let's do the same on this end. There's no way to switch it off. Kind of annoying when you're trying to dismantle it. Three. Let me take a closer look. So it's in a channel. It seems to be going down the middle. Can't really see much in there. I can't really see in there, but what I can see is there's not much of a battery in there. How do I get this? I'm getting somewhere. This is not going to come out. Aha, so there is a screw. Can you see that? So we need to detach 
this, which is the capacitive bit. So this should now slide the other way. There's the sensor. That's your standard PIR sensor. See if we can drag it all out. Here we go. For some reason my phone is not focusing. Aha! This is getting very interesting. Let me find what I just dropped on the floor. So that was the little PIR dome cap. So that is it, it's an aluminium tube. Very sturdy, very strong. Two diffusers. The cap for the PIR sensor. Should we take a closer look? The AL312, standard PIR sensor. Got some grounding, standard circuitry. But it's a very cool, small 1000 milliamp hour battery. LiPo. It's very cool, very small. I've never seen anyone like this. I might have to cannibalize one of these and grab this battery. So that's the battery. You got the power in, you've got a diode. One of these must be a charging IC. Must be a regulator as well, up to five volts for the LEDs. There's a couple of ICs that have got no markings on them. One there, and one there. No markings. And on the other side, we've got the LEDs. Standard warm white LEDs. 22 of them, 11 on each side. All in all, it's a very neat package. Very impressed. And now I've undone it, so you guys don't have to. There's two things I didn't show you. There's the LEDs, so when you switch it on, let me turn this down, switch it on. You get your flashing LEDs, roofer off, on, sensor off. And also, there is the LDR light dependent resistor. Very different surface mount LDR that I'm used to. I'm used to the through hole one. So that is the dismantle light. These are the ones that are not dismantled. If you want to check these out, there's a couple of links to the Amazon listing for UK and US that you can click on and go buy these lights. They're very good, very impressed. 22 LEDs is a lot more than your standard ones that usually get 10 and this rechargeable battery, 1000 milliamp uh, via USB, is fantastic. I'm very impressed with these, very chuffed. They were correct that I would like them. If you have made it this far, thank you for watching. If you have liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed, please do so by clicking on the subscribe link and hitting the bell so you get notified of all my videos that I will upload. Cheers guys.